In this video today, we're going to be looking at how to use multiple time frames to nail your entries and just to make sure that you understand how this Wyckoff market cycle works. So the typical cycle for any coin or any stock, anything that you can trade basically, is there's this accumulation, markup, distribution, and markdown phase. And then it repeats, right? So it'll go back through accumulation, markup, distribution, and markdown all over again. So over here, we're using Anchor on the three day. Now, it's really important to make sure that you're starting on the highest time frames first, just to see where you are as far as where the coin's data is. It's always easier to trade if you're entering into a higher time frame uptrend than it is trying to trade smaller time frames when the higher time frames are already in a downtrend. You're not going to get the bullish moves that you're expecting, and they're really shorter lived moves when you're trying to play bullish trades in a bearish market. So the first thing you want to do is zoom out to your higher time frames first. Uh, for this example, we're using Anchor on the three day and I've labeled the accumulation zone previously and this was back in 2020. And then you had your markup phase and then distribution phase. You had a big double top here and then the markdown phase started. And now that we've gotten back down to the bottom and we're assuming that this is another accumulation phase. After the accumulation phase is ended, we're expecting a new markup phase, just like it is done over here. So we're going to zoom in to the next time frame. The next one will be the one day chart. So now that we've zoomed in, we can see that there could be a bottoming structure here. You have this inverse head and shoulders idea, and it's just an idea so far. So we're trying to add confluence to the idea of why this should bounce or why this should continue higher, or really why you should get into the trade. So the first thing we're looking at is Whenever you're looking at a downtrend, you're looking for the point of the reversal. And normally the reversals will happen when you start getting these higher low swings after you've put in the low. So over here, it's already started. You have your, this is the initial low. This would be the lower low over here on this whole swing. And then over here, you see how it's broken above? This is the one day chart. This is the 200 MA, this yellow line. So already that's a good indication that the trend could be trying to reverse and go back into an uptrend. So now we're looking for other ideas on top of the break of the 200 MA and saying, how would I get into this trade now that I know that I've seen this bullish confirmation of that 200 MA break? This green circle here is what we're going to zoom into on the next time frame. And again, we're focused on this printing a possible higher low on this swing. Okay, now we've zoomed into the two hour chart. Now this big green circle. That's the green circle in this area here. We've just zoomed into a smaller time frame just so we can see all the details instead of just staring at these candles and can't really make a lot of sense of it. It kind of looks like a wedge so far. So we're going to use the two hour chart. And we're going to highlight this area and zoom in. So the same idea is what we're looking at on the one day. You're looking for a trend reversal idea. So you've got this low that came in and then it's forming this wedge. Now, if this wedge breaks out, it's probably going to make another swing, right? This will become a swing that's higher than this previous swing. So then you'd have a low over here, and then this would be possibly a higher low if this continues higher. So now that we've acknowledged that this is trying to put in a possible higher low, and we have a bullish reversal pattern, this falling wedge is a 68% chance of a break higher. So we're going to zoom in again. This green circle is going to be the next time frame that we look at on the lower time frames. Okay, so that green circle, we've zoomed into it now, and this is the 15 minute chart. Now again, the same idea continues. We're looking for a reversal idea with these swings. So over here you have this low, and then you have this lower low, and we're anticipating that it might make a higher low. One more swing to the downside before it continues higher. So again, we're gonna zoom in one more time, and we're gonna check out this area, and we're gonna set up a chart for this part of the chart over on the five minute time frame. Now that I've zoomed into the five minute, I can see, okay, I've kind of hit a brick wall as far as my bullish ideas go, right? We're not making swing lows at this point. Now we're starting to make swing highs when you get down to these smaller time frames. So the idea here is that we're looking for potentially a pullback to the 0.5. Now the 0.5 here on this chart on the five minute is 0.03167. So let's go take a look at the support levels that we're focused on on the 15 minute chart. So over here you had a bounce. Over here, you had another bounce. So potentially, if we're looking for a support bounce again, it could be around this level. And this is the same level that we were looking at a moment ago on the five minute chart, 0.03167. That number or that price is also the 0.5 Fib retracement if you pull this Fib from this bottom to this top. So potentially, you could get an entry if this comes all the way back down here. Now we're focused on these swings again, right? Even on the five minute chart, you can focus on these swings. 
and you're always going to get some kind of a clue. Anchor on the fifth on the five minute chart, sorry. We've got a high, and then potentially this is making a lower high. So if this continues lower and we get this lower high confirmation, potentially we're looking at a double top scenario here, and it could come down to this 0.5. And we're again, once it gets down to this level, we're not going to just buy it because it's hit that level. Ideally, you'd like to see another structure down here. Maybe you get a double bottom. Maybe this turns into a falling wedge, which would add another level of confluence to the trade. And then you'd be looking for an entry potentially after you see this structure created on the smaller time frames. If you get that double bottom or you get a falling wedge that breaks out to the upside, that could be your entry on the smaller time frames that's really getting you into this bigger pattern, right? If you back up again, you go into the 15 minute, you can see you might have an inverse head and shoulders forming here as well. Now, technically, this whole move could be a big bear trap, right? Once it comes up and it confirms the support tap again, that would confirm this whole move is a bear trap. So again, we're watching this support level for the next bounce if it happens. If this doesn't happen, we don't get this swing. We just go back to doing what we've always done, and you're just buying the break above the resistance. Once you've nailed down this method, you could even make a four chart setup, right? So now I've got four charts that are all showing anchor on different time frames. So we have anchor on the one day over here, and at the bottom I have anchor on the two hour, and then the 15 minute, and then I have the five minute. So really it's just all of these charts that you've already seen, except we've put them all together. And you can go up here and you can change that, right? So you can click on your layouts, and you can set up a layout, you can load a layout, you can make a new layout, and these different layouts will have your four chart quadrants once you set it up. Click on this button here, and this will allow you to select how you want your layout to be. Right? So if you want six charts or five charts or a different orientation of this idea, you just click this button up here, and right now I'm on the 4x4. Four four. So again, we'll go back to that five-minute chart. So what we're looking for here, you can add on your indicators as well. Once it's come down to this level, you might want to look at your RSI. So we're going to zoom down to the RSI here again and see what the RSI is up to. Potentially, if this comes down even lower and you get to oversold conditions, maybe you get some bullish divergence on the five minute, that could be an entry for your aggressive entry into this trade. Once you've nailed down that this swing is going to play out, and once you see over here that you're starting to get a bottoming structure, potentially that oversold level could be one of your first entries into the trade. And then you zoom out again, we'll look at the 15 minute. Now again, this one has a little more room to go, right? So if anchor came down on the 15 minute to oversold levels, and then the five minute came down to oversold levels at the same time. Now you have oversold conditions on two different time frames. So we're going to keep backing up. Now we're looking at the two hour. And same thing, right now the two hour RSI is pretty high. So we're going to wait for this to come back down as well. If you get a big retrace and this comes back down to oversold levels too, that could be another idea for an entry into this trade. It's just watching the oversold levels with bullish divergence. One more time, we'll back up again on the daily. Now the daily is looking a little better. Right, So the daily time frame is telling you that it's already had this pullback from being overbought. Now it's trying to bottom again, right? So you got this low, potentially this is a higher low. So this is just one more idea to add to your toolkit. Trying to nail an entry can be, um, be very strategic if you want it to be. It just depends how much work you put into it, how set up you are, how close you get to watch the charts, or how much time you have dedicated to watch a chart like this. The key here is if you're looking at these higher time frames and you have all these different time frames set up, you can get really good at starting to nail your entries when everything starts to come together and showing you the same ideas at the same time.